everybody, so today I'm going to be talking about calculations with sig figs, right? Um, this comes up a lot in chemistry, and that's mainly because when you are doing labs, you are dealing with things that are like 2.0 grams, or you might be looking at 56.7 milliliters of, you know, hydrochloric acid or something like that. Um, so that's where it becomes important because there's a lot of decimal places in chemistry because you're dealing with small numbers, but then when you look at something like physics, it's usually like, how fast is this object moving? And you know, if the thing tells you like 24 meters per second, you know, you just write 24 meters per second. Um, there's nothing that has to be like crazy analytical there. Um, and then also because in chemistry, when you're dealing with chemical reactions, you do want your numbers to be pretty exact because that will skew your answers a lot, right? So if you have something that's like, um, let's just say we're making water, right? And we have like hydrogen atoms and, you know, an OH. Um, if we have a lot of this, not a lot of this, we talked about this for limiting reagents, we're, you know, whatever. Um, you know, if your numbers get messed up and everything, you're going to create too little or too much of a product. Um, so that's where these numbers become important when you're doing calculations and lab and everything. This a lot comes into handy in chemistry 2 lab. Um, currently in that right now, we're doing a lot of sig fig work, a lot of calculations, so it definitely is important to learn. Okay, so there's only two things that you really have to know here, right? Um, and that is the difference between what we're doing with adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing. So these rules are going to be the same with each, so adding and subtracting is going to be the same rule, and multiplying and dividing is going to be the same rule. Okay, so first let's look at adding and subtracting, right? So adding and subtracting is going to be looking at the number of uh, numbers after the decimal place. Right, so I'll do an example here of what that would look like. So let's say we have a number like 24.782 minus 3.03, .03, right? Um, I'm going to do this on my calculator real fast because I am not good with mental math. So we have 24.782 minus 3.03. .03. And the number that we're going to get is 20. This is just what's on the calculator. This is not the right answer. 752. Right, so this is the correct answer, like mathematically, that would be the correct answer, but we have to get the right number of sig figs, right? So let's look at these numbers here. The numbers after the decimal point. So we have one, two, three numbers after the decimal point here, and we only have two here. So we always want to go with the lowest. So you always, with both of these, you want to go with the lowest number in accordance to what we're talking about, right? So, number of numbers at decimal. Which one has the lowest number, right? So, we have three and we have two here. So, we want to have two here. So, we have to round down, right? So, we're going to make this zero and we're going to cut off the zero, basically. So, we get 27.752. Ooh, would be two there, but we're saying screw that two. We only need two numbers at decimal. Bye bye. But if this was a number like five or anything greater than that, um, we would have to make this number bigger, so this would become 6, right? Um, but yeah, so that's that, right? Um, and then the next thing is when we are adding and dividing, um, we want to look at the amount of sig figs. And we're going to be doing the same thing where we're using the lowest number of sig figs. Alright, so let's do an example of that. Alright, so let's say we have point. Two, two, yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> Multiply that by 507.63. Right. Okay, so I'm going to do that into my calculator. 202, 507.63. Alrighty, so we're going to get 1,025. Point four one two six. All right, so we're looking at this number. And we're like, okay, we got to figure out how to do the significant figures for this and find the correct number of sig figs, right? 
So again, we want to do the lowest amount. So I'm going to kind of draw like little things here just so that I can remember the numbers. So now let's figure out how many sig figs are in these numbers, right? Looking back on before, this has decimal place, so we're going to be moving this way. So from left to right, we're going to go one, two, three. This says three sig figs. Same thing here, we're going from left to right. One, two, three, four, five. So this has five sig figs. Cool. So we know that the lowest number here is three sig figs. So now how do we get this number to three sig figs? So we're going to go this way. One, two, three. So this is going to be where the last um, significant digit is going to be. So we're going to have to round up from here. So we're saying screw all these numbers, and we got to round up, right? So we're going to go 1030. Um, you can add the decimal point. You can not add the decimal point. It um, doesn't really matter because technically what Professor Sherlock said is that if you have the decimal point there and there's a zero following it to the left, um, it's like ambiguous I think is the word that he used but personally I don't add the decimal point because I was always taught that when there is decimal point it changes the whole thing so if I add decimal point this would be four sig figs because remember if there's decimal point you're moving from left to right so you're going one two three four all those zeros would be significant but if there's no decimal point you're going this way so you don't count that and then you go one two three so that would personally be my answer um to that so this is a pretty simple concept here and this will be a relatively short video but I was going to make it separate just because when I made the first video it was at I don't know like 2 a.m. and I was going crazy so I couldn't do it any longer um <laughs> so I'm going to add in some practice here same thing as the last video if you guys you know want to pause at the time when I'm done doing this, feel free to pause, but then I'm going to be explaining how everything works and we're gonna look at the answer. Okay, so we'll do. That's point one, by the way. I know I write my ones different every single time I write them, so apologies for that. I literally wrote them different. Um, two. This is multiplying, by the way. This is how I write multiplying. And then this will be dividing. <laughs> Throw in it, uh, one of these in here. One more of each. All right. Um, one more. We'll do another division. Yeah, do. Okay. So. Um, the same thing as before, I'm going to change the color of my pencil here, and feel free to pause this video now because I will be going over the explanations. Okay, so when we're looking at the first one, we're going to do 2.46 minus 0.1 in our calculator, and the answer that we are going to get is 2.36. So now we think, alright, so we just did a plus or a minus, you know, What's the word for that? Addition or subtraction. But we have to look at the amount of numbers after the decimal place, right? So this one, we have two numbers after the decimal point. This one, we only have one. So what we have to do is we have to round up this number so that we can take away this, right? So we're going to get 2.4. There's our answer. Okay, next one. We're going to do 36.27. Move my thing out of the way. 0 0.0025 multiplying so we're going to look at the significant figures i'm going to write out the answer that we get here is zero nine oh six seven five okay 
So now let's look at significant figures, right? So this, we're going, there's a decimal place, we're going from left to right. Zero, zero, all right, first significant digit, one, two. So this has two sig figs. And this one, we're doing the same thing, going from left to right, this has one, two, three, four. Four significant figures. So we're gonna use two significant figures. So now we're gonna do the same thing where we're going from left to right, we have one, one, two. Cool, so what we have to do is round this number up so that I can get rid of this. So it's going to be 0 0.091. There is our answer for number two. Alrighty, so now next one, we are going to be doing division. And so we're going to do a 0, 0, 0, 2 divided by... This one's mean. Is this the one where I like that's mean? No, it's not. Just a lot of numbers in there. I'm already messing it up. 7, 6, 8. Okay. So this is the answer that I got on my calculator. I got zero, one, one, three, one, two, and there was a few more numbers that came after that. But oh, also please disregard my dog; she's crazy. So you're gonna probably hear some barking. Okay, so we're going from left to right here. So left to right, not a significant, not a significant, not a significant. Here's our first significant. So we're going to say one. All right, now we're gonna do the same thing over here. Not significant, not significant. One, two, three, four, four. So we're going to be using number one because that's the lowest. So going from left to right, boom, one. We don't have to round anything up so we can just get rid of these. So we go point zero one, and there is our answer. Okay, next one, we are doing it. Two, two times 10 to the six. Plus 3.78 times 10 to the 6th. Okay, so the number that I got on my calculator is 5.78 times 10 to the 6th. Now let's look at the numbers after the decimal point, right? Because that's what we're looking at. You can see here there's zero numbers after the decimal point. Doesn't that stink? We're probably going to assume that's going to be the lowest number because this one has 1, 2... Alrighty, so we're going to look at zeros numbers after the decimal place. So basically what that means is that we don't want any numbers after the decimal place. So we have to get rid of both of these numbers here. Boop. Because this number... Oh, that was so cringe. I should not have done that. Um, because this number is <laughs> larger than 5, we have to round this number up. So our answer is going to be 6 times 10 to the 6. You never cut out this times 10 to the 6 because this is telling us how big the number is. So we always want to keep that in there. I'm literally just scribbling it out because I didn't like the fact that I put a box over it because that might be confusing. Um, yeah, there's our answer. Okay, next one is... 3,476.2 plus 2.023. And the number that we're going to get is 3... Oh my god, that's not a 3. You would think that if I filmed this video, you know, early in the morning, it wouldn't be an issue, but no, it is. Um, <laughs> three, four, seven, eight, point two, and decimal point, two, two, three. Okay, addition and subtracting. We're looking at the amount of numbers after the decimal point, right? So this has one after the decimal point, and this has one, two, three, three numbers after the decimal point. So we're going to be using this number here. So we need one number at a decimal point so we can say, screw these guys, we don't need you, you're unimportant to me, get out of here. Don't have to round up because you're just a little guy, you don't even matter. So we're going to do 3, 4, 7, 8, point 2. And there's our answer. Last but not least, we're going to be doing 278 divided by 2. That's an easy number, no decimal points, but oh my god. But since we are doing um, multiplication and division, we're actually doing division here, we're going to be looking at the number of sig figs. So there's no decimal points on any of these numbers here, so we're going to be going from right to left. Right to left, we hit number 2, that's the only number there, so this has one sig fig. Now I'm going this way, right to left, 1, 2, 3, got 3 sig figs, we're going with 1. So this number rounded to 1 sig fig, we're going to get rid of these numbers and we're going to get 100 easy as that. Alrighty, so that is the end of this video. The next video we're going to be talking about the difference between accuracy and precision, 
and then we're going to be going through basically all of the lessons that we've gone over um, in class from there. So thank you all for watching and have a good one.